Time for something different, and on the 3rd of all, October 2024, myself, John Luce, and Matthew Myberg set out on the Parilla Cup 1000 miler, starting at Paris in the Free State, just south of the Gauteng traffic, and heading for Bloberg Strand, Cape Town, in full view of the beautiful Table Mountain, via Kimberley, Griqualand West, and some remote regions of the Northern Cape. As mentioned, the, in the title, the distance is 1,000 miles, just over 1,600 kilometers, and in it, it has 10,056 meters of vertical ascent, which implies that it's a fairly flattish route. There is a bit of climbing nearer to Cape Town Way, the first three quarters of the route being very flat, but, um, but all in all, on average, it's not a lot of vertical ascent, um, so it's a fairly fastish uh, mostly gravel route to Cape Town via some beautiful but very remote parts of the country. Or being a, or, albeit being a fairly flattish route, uh, it's nonetheless challenging. It goes a lot further north than the Joburg to Bloberg, which runs down towards Bloemfontein and down the Forgot Forgotten Highway. Um, the, the Joburg to Bloberg route having significantly more towns at more frequent intervals to resupply. So this is the challenge uh, of the Parilla Cup route via Griqualand West, is especially after Kimberley. It starts becoming far more remote. The towns are often significantly further apart. The longest distance between two towns being uh, from Douglas to Prisca, 158 kilometers, although there are a few farms for water supply. But thereafter, probably the remotest uh, stretch from Van Veeksvlei to Brandvlei, 146 kilometers in which you won't find a water resupply and you won't find uh, a farmhouse. You hardly find a vehicle passing you. It is extremely quiet and extremely remote. So one, one needs to be well prepared for that. The roads are a lot quieter, even from the outset when, the, uh, when you leave Paris and you go into the Freer de Fort Dome. Uh, it's, it's, it's quiet from the outset, very few buckies passing you, but it really gets quieter, a lot quieter after Kimberley and then after Douglas when you move away from the rivers uh, into more barren areas with very remote uh, and, uh, um, and sparse uh, population and farming. Our inaugural ride was a little bit on the slow side, I'd say. We did suffer from some quite hot days, uh, but let's not make excuses. It was nine days, one hour and 40, um, and we weren't setting land speed records, but we certainly were having a lot of fun. It was absolutely beautiful the whole uh, the, the whole trip. Um, the features of the trip, the Freer de Fort Dome, it starts off uh, just outside Paris. You turn off the tar road and wind your way through the Freer de Fort Dome. Uh, the mountains on the edge of what is the larger, the world's largest known vol uh, meteorite impact crater, and the mountains were pushed up instantly by when that meteorite hit Mother Earth. Um, couple of million or billion years ago, I'm not quite sure, but a little bit before our time. Um, the, the route then hugs the, goes through the mealy lands, um, past Filiunskruen, Boerteville, a lot of pivot farming, a lot of irrigation farming, because it's always near to the Vaal River. Crisscrossing the Vaal River here and there, and going through Blumhoff Dam Town. Blumhoff Dam being the seventh largest dam in the country, so there's another attraction should one wish to take a little detour off the route in the process and spend some time. It then goes on to Kimberley, which is known obviously as the Diamond Rush City, the, the big holes there for sightseeing. We didn't have time for any of that. We were in and out of Kimberley fairly quickly, but there's the, the, the Kimberley Hole, the Kimberley Hole Museum and historic sites such as the Kimberley Club where Cecil John and, and Barney Bonato used to hang out and drink. Um, you can even stay there, it's a hotel now. So there certainly are a few things to see in Kimberley if you do have time. We were in and out on our way to Douglas. Douglas is the town near the confluence of the Vaal and the Orange Rivers. Um, again, a little bit of a detour um, for those of the sightseers who have the time to get to, that, um, to, the, to the viewing point. We were on our way across the Orange River, across the Vaal River, excuse me, at, at, at Douglas um, and on our way to Prisca very early one morning to avoid the heat because, as I've mentioned, Douglas to Prisca is the longest distance between two towns, 158 kilometers, with a bit of resupply of water um, because there were some farms when we dipped in and out of the Orange River Valley, so there was place for water. Priest, for after Prisca, you move away from the rivers. You move into the dry part of the country, very dry part of the country, 
and it was about 135 kilometers to Van Beeksvlei with very little farms, very little side of human life. And it gets even quieter when you pass Van Beeksvlei, where we rented a room from a lady who goes by the name of Kate Middleton, just by the way. Um, yes, a Durban lady who speaks English in Van Beeksvlei of all places, it happens. On we went the, thereafter early the next morning, one o'clock in the morning to avoid the heat because the largest, probably the, the longest stretch without resupply of any sort of water, uh, there's no farms, there's no operating farms that you can see along the way, is from Van Veeksvlei to Brandvlei. Quite amazing. We started in, in, in darkness and at some point we switched off all our lights. You could not see any light of civilization, of a farm, of a car, of a building, of a tower, of any sort. It was absolutely pitch back, three, back 360 degrees around us. And it's a pretty flat area and you can see pretty far. The stars are absolutely beautiful. It's, some, it's, it's, it's a real experience for those of us who live in the cities such as Joburg and the only stars we see are actually planes. Um, the route then after, after Brandflay starts getting logistically easier, um, still, still quite a big haul to Luriesfontein, but after that the towns and the resupply points become ever more frequent. There is a sting in the tail though for this, uh, in, in, in this route, and that is in terms of climbing. Across the central plateau of the country, all the way past Brandflay, past Luriesfontein, or to Luriesfontein, it's fairly flattish. Um, but thereafter, when you drop off the escarpment after Luriesfontein, it becomes, um, there becomes some significant climbing in the ride. Dropping off from Luriesfontein, climbing up a mountain to Nivotsville, um, then, then a big down again, then up over one of the bigger passes in South Africa, Pakes Pass. Um, over 800 meters of vertical ascent up to the top, and it's the 11th, uh, when it comes to vertical ascent ranking, it's the 11th biggest part, pass in the country. So very, very significant, and obviously a massive drop down the other side into the beautiful town of Clan William. From there onwards, there's a few more passes. Um, it, it becomes a bit passy for a while and, 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 and climbing, but you're back in um, where, where there's more human civilization. So you've always got the farms to, you know, should you run out of water to resupply and the odd trading store, the favorite having been the Palace Heerville trading store. Um, then from Mariasburg, the run-in is fairly simple, mostly tar road from Malmesbury onwards into the, into the, um, to the finish at Bloberg, along cycle tracks all the way from Melkbos, and you end at Eden on the Bay in, in Bloberg. Um, nine days, one hour and 40 minutes later. The route was amazing for its remoteness. I think that's what we liked about it most. It took us to parts of the country we'd never dreamt of going before. Um, people with normal cars probably sometimes don't go there because it's all just gravel roads in and out. Um, and, 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 and quite amazing. Um, I would say that due to the extreme weather conditions and the remoteness of the area, it's probably better to do this trip best doing it with someone. Uh, if you have a technical in the in halfway in between Van Veeksvlei and Brandvlei, for instance, um, you may wait a very long time before you even find a bucky passing you. It might not even happen the same day. Um, and in, in if it's hot, you may run out of water. There are no resupply opportunities that we could see anywhere really along that road between those two towns. Um, and there are other, other stretches as well which are very significant. So it's probably better to do it with someone and if you run into a technical that or, or, or some sort of problem that person can ride ahead to the next town and enlist help in the form of probably a bucky to come and come and fetch you from, from there. So that would be a, a, a word of warning for anyone doing this. Don't underestimate the route. It's got a sting in the tail. After Lurie's Fontaine, you think it's nice and flat, but after Lurie's Fontaine, there's some very, very significant passes to go over on your way on the, on the run into Cape Town. Time of year to do it is, is, is a challenge. Those parts of the country can get bitterly cold in winter and extremely hot in summer. I would go with the bitterly cold. You can dress up, you can have good gear for, for bitterly cold, but make sure it's good gear. You can always dress up for cold but you can't dress up for heat, and in heat you're going to run out of water very quickly. That too, I, I, there too I would issue a, a suggestion, and that is make sure you've got extra capacity on your bike for significant uh, amounts of water for those long stretches where you won't get resupplies. One needs to be, so one needs to be more prepared uh, for this route, I think, 
the non al Joburg to Bloberg route to the south where resupplies are more um, f uh, plentiful and farms and farmers and, and, and human habitation is more plentiful should you come short and Bucky's pass you more. This is a, very, uh, is a much quieter route. That's the attraction of it, but it also, of, uh, also comes with its hazards for which you have to prepare.